We're going to be talking about boundaries today, specifically hearing about when, what might indicate that our boundaries have slipped and what can you do if you find yourself in that situation. Um, the other thing briefly that I want to mention is that we're, I don't know if it's because summer is happening, but I'm seeing a lot of moms online doing a lot of complaining and complaining is great. I complain, I vent, whatever. Um, but what I'm seeing is like complaining, this is how it is, oh, woe is me, bummer, but not taking action. So if you find yourself in this camp of complaining, you have to really ask yourself, is the issue that I'm complaining about more comfortable then does that outweigh the discomfort of change? Because complaining about it is great, but if you don't do anything, then nothing's going to change. So if you keep tuning into these videos and nothing is changing for you because you're not doing anything, um, I'm gonna challenge you this week to actually do something different and actually implement something. So. That's my little plug there. Um, so let's jump right into boundaries. So how do you know if your boundaries have slipped? Generally, it's if you find yourself getting irritable, you find yourself getting really short with your family, or if your kid, you find yourself in this like, they don't listen to me at all and they're walking all over me and I have told them a hundred times and they're just not listening. So there are all these little things that happen and it manifests in us being really irritable. We feel disorganized and overwhelmed. We feel pulled in too many different directions because there are so many things like people are asking us to do this or asking us to do that. and we're doing we're trying to do it so we literally are pulled in all these different directions um so we might find ourselves especially frustrated when someone doesn't respond with the proper level of gratitude so i do something for someone and they don't automatically shower me in gratitude or even like if i slave over dinner slave is not a good word there but if i work really hard on dinner and my kids come to the table and they're like, I don't like this. Like if that's frustrating, right? That's just annoying. It's very frustrating and annoying. But if that takes me up to like oh, level hundred, then that's an indication that something else is going on because that's a disproportionate response, right? And so the other way this can manifest is resentment towards those around us. And you might not recognize it as resentment, but it's especially true if you find yourself being like, oh, it would be really nice if I could go do that. Like that kind of tone and all that stuff, that, that's resentment. So if you're feeling that, then you're likely in a situation where your boundaries have slipped. And when I say your boundaries have slipped, I want to be clear that I'm not saying you have done something wrong. You have set yourself up for failure. That's not what I'm saying. Like, hello, we have just been like living in a pandemic. And so a lot of us, like our children still aren't vaccinated. So we still have this level of tension there and this level of fear and lack of feeling safe. So it makes perfect sense that when we have all of these different stressors, stressors and we're exhausted that we're going to give in a lot, especially with our kids, because it's so much easier when we're stressed and we're already worn down and they ask for the hundredth time. And it's just like, oh gosh, like fine, take it. I get it. I get it. You're not bad for having done that. But just because you have done that doesn't mean you need to keep doing that. So the other thing, what, what this means, where does this come from? Where do these feelings come from? These feelings come when we feel like we're being taken for granted or when we start to feel invisible. And that is often because we're lacking boundaries. 
kids aren't intentionally hurtful. They're not manipulative. And this is, this is my belief in childcare and parenting. There are a billion different philosophies, but my philosophy is that they are not intentionally hurtful. They are not intentionally manipulative. Their behavior is communication. They are very, very smart. So your child might not be trying to get you to scream at them, but they have, they may have learned that you have to get to the point of screaming for you to give in to what they want because you feel so bad about screaming that you're like, okay, fine, you can do the thing. Anybody else? Was that just me? Am I the only one that does that? Please raise your hand <laughs> if you do it too. I totally am guilty of that myself. And it's so hard because so often the screaming comes after I've let the boundary go. So I've been like, oh, well, I do whatever. Da, da, da. And then I just like get so frustrated. Like, what the heck? What's going on? Well, what's going on is there's no boundary. So what do we do when we find ourselves in this situation? First of all, here, this group, this is where you go. We're here to support you. Clear is kind with all people, especially with children. Children need a clear boundary. Think of a boundary like a fence or a moat or something like that. And they need to know where the line is. You get a lot of kids will just push and push and push the line. And it can be so infuriating as a parent. And I remember very vividly as a child and particularly as a teen being like consciously saying, I'm just, I, I like to push the boundaries. And that's true of all children. They like to push the boundaries. They like to know where's the line. They need someone, an adult, to tell them where is the line. So if you are not communicating where the line is, if they feel like they are in control, well, that is really scary to a kid. They can't handle that much power. You have to lay out the boundary for them. And it has to be a clear boundary. And I'm not saying that you're going to lay this out and they're going to be like, oh, man, thanks, Mom. I really needed that. Whew. I am going to listen to everything you say now because I just really needed that boundary. No, that's not the way it's going to work. But you will, over time, once you start sticking to that boundary and sticking to it, they're going to see, oh, she's not giving in. And there's going to be, eventually there's going to be a sense of calm and lowered anxiety because they're going to know where that boundary is. You're going to start getting less pushback. Initially, you're going to get more pushback because they're like, oh, I need to find the new, the new boundary. So this is when I talk about people complaining and not doing anything, I know why people do that. Because sometimes it is so uncomfortable and so overwhelming to think about changing and doing anything different. It's so just uncomfortable. And so that discomfort is more than the discomfort of staying where you are. So if I'm saying you can do this, you can make this change, and you're like, oh gosh, I don't want to do that. What I don't want you to do is go down that path of, oh, this is what my children need, and I'm going to be a bad mom if I don't do this, and da 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 That's shooting yourself, and don't you should yourself, because if you are in a position where the discomfort of change is greater than the discomfort of staying, then maybe you just need to stay where you are for the moment. I'm a big fan of change, I'm a big fan of growth, but I ha we all have to be honest with ourselves and evaluate where you really are. So that's my little plug for that. So continuing with this clear as kind, if children feel like they can sway you with their big emotions, it's they will do it and it is scary for them, it's too much power. They do not need to have that power. 
So we had this actually with our daughter recently. She had a preference for me over my partner and um, she would scream when he came into the room and say, no, go away. I don't want to talk to you. Um, and at first we were like, okay, you want to be alone. And so he would like leave the room and I would go in. And what we discovered through very helpful people was that we were giving her too much power. So what he started doing was when he would go in and she would freak out and scream, I don't want you here. Go away. Um, I want mommy instead. He would stand firm and say, I hear you. I am here. I'm not going. You may not push me away. And he was present. And, you know, she eventually calmed and who knows if it's a phase. I mean, like, I, I know what helps my kids and what supports them, but don't ask me the science behind it because I'm not that person. But what I do know is that now she doesn't really do that anymore. So was it a phase? Was it in response to that? I don't know. But I know that she's not resistant to him anymore. She still sometimes has a preference over me, but... In the last week or two, she's also been showing a preference for him. So she's back and forth now. So this is what I'm saying. Like, don't give them that power because that is your power. You have these boundaries and you can't control your child. You can't control if they're happy with your boundary. You can't control if they're mad about it. But what you can do is you can control the boundary. And so that is your role as the parent. So set and stick to boundaries. If we are not consistent, our children are going to see it. And it's the same with like our partners and other people that we're in relationship with. But kids it just, they, they have such long memories, right? And so that consistency is so much more important with kids than it is with a random adult. So that. The last thing I want to say about this is we need to be giving out of a place of abundance. So if you've let your boundaries slip and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna execute more boundaries, one of those boundaries needs to be recharging yourself. So what do you need to recharge? Because if we give out of a place of abundance, we're less likely to be resentful. I've talked about this before. And we are gonna be happier. We're just gonna be more joyful in our giving. And if we, don't have the abundance to give, then some of the boundaries that we need are going to have to be around getting us rested and recharged. So what can you do to implement that this week for real? And if I would love to hear from you, if you're like, Trisha, the discomfort of change is greater than the discomfort of staying right now drop a comment in because you know what? You're probably not alone. And to all the other moms that are watching this and saying, oh, I'm a bad mom because I don't want to do this. Like you're going to normalize that for them. We all have those times and that's okay. You don't have to judge yourself if you're in that position. But if you are like, man, this is really uncomfortable and I want to do something different, then do something different. So comment below, what are you going to do different this week? And how can you do it differently while maintaining compassion for the choices that you've made up to this point? So I hope you can do something there. Um, I will say I have scheduled a weekend away for myself this weekend. I'm super excited about it. If you've never done it, I encourage you to do it. So um, take some planning and some cooperation, but you can do it. So have a good rest of your week and please let me know what you thought about this, this what, what, this talk, <laughs> everything I just said, let me know what you think. And if you want to talk more specifically, you're like, I really want to do this, but I'm super confused how to do it. You know what? You don't have to know how to do it. Get in touch with me. My schedule, my, the link to my scheduler is below. I am really good at listening to your brain dump and telling you what you need to do. So get on my schedule, brain dump, 
I'm going to tell you what to do. Got it? Okay, great. Have a good week. Bye.